what I'm going to do is give you a little review of what the study feed exam. But you know, whenever you have communication verbally, it's so easy to misunderstand people. That's why lawyers write up contracts and that's why the syllabus was written up in a, in a somewhat formal way. So what my dear mentor, Dr. David Falk from the University of Maryland, who passed away this summer, would say, my dear mentor, he would say when someone asked him what's on the exam, he would say everything, like to the, like everything you ever learned in school, like penmanship, like how to spell, how to read, like how to add, subtract, everything. So in that way, he protected himself from, well, I thought you said this was on the exam. So I want to qualify things uh, first by saying technically everything's on the exam, as my dear beloved mentor, Dr. David Falk would say, who trained me very well at the University of Maryland many years ago. That said, I'm going to go through the book and the homework and tell you what's more likely to be on the exam. Take it in that kind of a spirit. And when you're in doubt, ask me, write me an email. If you're not sure about this re review, like what I'm saying, write me an, e an email, all right? And, and that way we can clarify for you. So with that said, I'm going to go through the book and go through the uh, homework assignments to uh, show you what you should focus on in preparing uh, for this exam. The exam, by the way, is going to have a GRE type part, a multiple choice part, and it's also going to have then the usual problem, you know, uh, working out problems also. Okay, here we go. Okay, a review here for the first optics exam. First thing I'm going to do is hit the syllabus here just to make sure when the exam is and what it's on. So here we see September 15th, 15th here, September 15th, exam one covers A through G. All right, so let's go check up on what A through G is. So here we have seven chapters and there'll be seven video lectures that go with those and seven homeworks. Well, let's look at the uh, chapters here. Well, for this first one, you might recall there was a lot done with uh, calculus of variations. Now, this is too involved to be on the exam. So here, I, I would just know the general idea what what was done and you don't need to worry about having something this long on the exam. No, you would not need to know that derivation. And you would need, not need to know the Lagrangian that's in mechanics class. So here, uh, the principle of least time, this would be something that we, uh, we looked at in homework, and they would be good to do. So if you were to go to, let's say, the next the next chapter here, uh, you do want to be able to do these kind of questions here where you can set up the, uh, the time and you had one for homework where someone was rowing on a, on a boat and then had the walk. So these are fairly straightforward to set up. So let's look at this chapter a little more carefully here. If we go back to the beginning, we do, of course, want to know our, our Schnell's Law. You, you had Snell's Law before. You want to make sure you know Snell's Law. There, and, these, and these formulas, you do want to know these. Th th these come from an earlier course. You know, the velocity is the wavelength times the frequency. The frequency is one over the period. And this is a variation. This is basically saying distance over time. If I go a wavelength in the period T, that's the same as really using this one here and putting in for the F, 1 over T. So you want to know Schnell's Law, Schnell's Law, and there it is right there. N1 times sine of theta 1 is N2 sine of theta 2, but this is nothing new. This is stuff you've had before. 
and remember that you measure those angles from the normal where you have a you have a normal to the surface the interface and the angle is measured from the ray coming to the surface with respect to that normal okay and then here yes and we did the problem with the Fermat so you do want to know Fermat for these kind of problems and here you were doing things like the similar for homework so you definitely want to know that and the definition of the index of a fraction once again these are all from a previous course these things uh, here for the mirage is really nothing to memorize here no I wouldn't worry about that I wouldn't even worry about the ideal gas law here although you should know that that's good to know that PV is an RT but that shouldn't be on the exam not this time at least so if we move on to the rainbows here we have well you should you should know generally um, that you know the, the blues on the bottom for the uh, primary rainbow the reds on top and it flips for the secondary and know that this is roughly 40 you know degrees for the primary and the seconds like roughly 50. There are going to be some questions on this exam that are GRE type kind of questions or multiple choice. So for that you know, certain concepts and, and reasoning will be important. So I would do know that about the rainbows but all this is too much this is no you're not going to be doing this all right and the principle of the taking the derivative of course we know how to do that but the rainbow problem is too involved it would take too long to do this on an, on an exam all right so let's move on to the next chapter uh, mirrors and mirrors a lot of this is a review of things you've had before like if you are in front of the mirror here with a, a point object point the image is behind and you did some homework problems where you had to to locate images and then if this you know light reflects again then the image of an image so that's good to know how to do those problems you know here the idea that if you're behind the image is behind the mirror then at the mirror you would have uh, half the half your size so that the mirror you need to see your full self would be 50 percent of yourself these are concepts mainly now we come to our first uh formula that you know, it's in 222 class again. So I guess for this first exam, a lot of this is going to be re in a review of things you've had before. Of course, we go into more detail with some of these equations. But here, I would say you're going to memorize your you're going to memorize your formula for the mirrors. But you know, the mirrors and the lenses have the same formula. It's one over s, you know, i plus one over s o is one over f. And you remember for the mirror that the rays of curvature is like twice the distance of the focal line so if you remember that you pretty much have all the formulas because the lenses have the same formulas so what you want to remember is this formula very very important for both types of uh, mirrors and both types of lenses now for the uh, concave the f is positive for the uh, convex the F is negative. And remember, the F is one half the radius of curvature. Now, for the converging lens, F is positive, and for the diverging lens, F is negative. Now, we need to know about the signs for the image uh, distance. If the image is in negative space, negative image space, then you'll have SI being negative. What is negative image space? Well, for a mirror, since the light wants to reflect back to the same side, the negative image space is behind the mirror, where there is no light. 
And for the lenses, since light wants to penetrate through the glass to go to the other side, you need to go through the glass, the negative image space is on the same side of the object. So for the mirror, it's behind the mirror. For the lens, when the light's coming from the left, it's on the left side. So you do want to know those. And you want to know your rays, too. These, these are concepts. Parallel light goes through left. Ray through the center bounces right back. And ray three, the one that goes through F, see, is really ray one backwards. So here, ray one through uh, parallel through F, and here through F and parallel. So you want to know your three rules for both types of mirrors that are quite similar, and the three rules for both types of lenses. And they're quite similar also. There's a concave upside down and there's a there's the uh, concave again with the uh, makeup mirror the makeup mirror so you do want to know how to do these sketches uh, to reason things out very important to do that and something like this is a nice review that tells you where all the uh, answers are everywhere to go through that and the convex mirror all right, so here you don't need to worry about this, uh, these derivations. You're not going to be deriving the formulas. But what you do want to know is those formulas, you know, the 1 over S O plus 1 over S I is 1 over F. So we go to the lens maker's formula here. And here we start to get more involved beyond the 222 class. But there is you know, a lot of review here still, like the types of uh, lenses, the converging versus the diverging. And the similar rays, you know, how to do the ray diagrams, parallel as if coming from F. And if it's converging, you go through F on the other side, see, straight through the center. And here you aim at F and go at parallel. So you do want to know these rules. And the main thing here is, you know, when you know your rules, here's your parallel light goes through F, parallel right goes through F, here's one through the center, and here's one through F out parallel, similar to the other uh, cases with the mirrors, and, you know, all possible cases here. And what you want to do here, not the derivations, we're not going to be deriving this formula, but you want to know, yeah, here you go. This is the important thing. You want to know this formula uh, for the mirrors and for the lenses and the definition of the magnification minus SI over SO. And then you want to know, like when you have two lenses, that you can have an you have intermediate image and then you can find, like that's the object, for the next, uh, the next optical element, and then apply like this law again. All right. So don't worry about the derivations, but know the uh, the the formulas for each one. And yeah, then you could apply it to something like this. See, once when you know your formulas, you apply them twice: once for this surface, so once for this surface. And here's the concept of the intermediate image. And then you, you know, look at the separation distance to figure out how to do the second optical element. So that's important. Here, uh, you don't need to memorize the lens maker's formula. But you should know it depends on the... It depends on the radius of curvature of each surface and index of refraction. So you don't have to memorize this formula, but what's, what does the maker's formula depend on? Well, it's got to be the radius of curvature and the, and the index of refraction of the glass. I mean, that's basically it there. So I wouldn't worry about memorizing that formula. All right, so if we go now to thick lenses. Now, thick lenses is definitely you know, new stuff for the 300-level course. They don't usually do that at all in uh, introductory classes. Uh, the idea that you have uh, principal uh, po cardinal points, and the main one here probably is this principal plane. That, that principal plane, that's where the light if you start out the focal point, that's where a light appears to bend once that would go out in infinity due to the first surface. 
And then for this second surface, the same thing like in reverse. If you come up here, it reflects like once there, it'll go out that way. Or you can think of the parallel right coming in, hitting that surface, ignoring this first surface. So those principal planes are concepts nice to know. Here, once again, uh, too much stuff here. You don't need to know these derivations. So I would say you don't have, you need to know how to though think this way and, and to work to work this out in general. So you don't memorize this. What you do is you think of it from the point of view of, well, see, with this, nah, with this we're not going to be, with this we're not going to be memorizing this kind of stuff. Let's see what we're going to do here. The process, you know how to do this process. And I think the best example here might be that two lens homework problem that we gave you to apply things, you know, twice. And that, that is probably the better thing uh, to look at. Yeah, all this. Yeah, so I think the best thing here is this homework problem for this is e yeah let's look at this uh yeah these are very very good homework problems so i think that these here yeah definitely this is this is better to understand what could be on the exam in fact we probably should we should probably look at that but before we do that look at the homework problem look at the camera lenses that's the last chapter and what you want to do here is you do want to memorize your f number formula uh, I wouldn't worry about this uh, wave stuff. I would skip over this. You don't need this. We'll be doing waves later. You don't need this formula. Uh, what you would do here is you would uh, definitely, yeah, here you go. You want to memorize, well, you should know inverse square law. Whenever you double the distance, you know, then it's one, it's, or, or when you double, it's one fourth. And, and you want to know this here, that the, uh, I like to do it this way. D is F slash number. So you do have to memorize this formula. So the D is the F number, all right? So uh, pick your favorite way. I like this way. But if you have this one, then of course you got the one on the right. Or if you like the one on the right, that one's cool too. And that one relates to like the picture diagram where the artist, you know, drew these circles. And here I would say, uh, your F number sequence is simply taking square roots of uh, when you, you know, one, two, four, eight. So you should know how, how to do that. That every F stop, the regular F stops is a factor of two. And if it's a factor of two in the area, then when for the linear dimension, take a square root. So you want to know that, know these numbers, and you can memorize those easily. Remember the one on a 1.4, you jump over. Uh, that's a nice trick, you know, jump over here, 2, 4, 8, 16, 1.4, 2.8, 5.6, etc. So you do want to know that, and yeah, there's that nice little picture formula there, uh, formula in pictures where you draw the pictures. So if, that, if you like that formula better, where you go with the number is F over D, how many Ds fit inside the focal length, that's the same formula. I wouldn't worry about fractional stops. And depth of field, very nasty calculation we did. You should understand the principle of the depth of field and that the least, and the smallest least circle of confusion, you know, it's going to, well, it's going to improve the depth of field. But the derivation was really very, very long and that would not be on the exam. So you wouldn't need to know uh, how to set up those triangles and do all that. That takes too long. So we don't need to, worry about this derivation this way way too long all right to to do on an exam uh, hyperfocal uh, you should know the concept but you don't need to memorize the formula all right the hyper the, the hyper what you should know there is that when you at the hyperfocal distance when you focus there you're good to go to infinity and to half that distance you know h over two to infinity you should know that's a general concept uh, we didn't do anything with entrance and exit pupils so we can skip over that uh, angle of view is very important. This is interesting to set up. You can set this up very, very easily, you know, the size of your film, and then you can figure out what this angle is using the trigonometry here, like taking a tangent. And 
a tangent of 20, you know, half that angle is then the 18 over F. So yeah, you should, you should know how to set, you know, draw a picture of a lens and the film and then go backwards to get your angle of view. And then this uh, geometry, you know, gets you the angle of view for any film size. I would definitely know how to set that up and know this concept of the, uh, and then here I would say no 50 is normal for this classic SLR camera. And telephoto is longer than that, then it's a more narrow angle of view. And then if you're wide angle, you're less than 50. So just generally speaking, you know, wide angle is 35 millimeter, 50 millimeter focal length is normal. And then beyond that's telephoto. And that's, uh, can be seen with the Biltmore house here, all those uh, pictures there. So then let's go, look, let's look at homework. Let's look at homework. So here, yes, uh, this is perfect. Perfect for an exam, all right? And you can study, you know, with the solutions. Uh, not all of them are posted at the point of this review, but I wanted to get this review early. But yes, perfect. Perfect for homework uh, and for exam, I mean. Yeah, these are, these are, know how to do these. Know how to set these up and do these too. So that's, this is good. I think we get a better idea of the exam from the homework than actually from the book itself. All right, so that's homework one. Then homework uh, B, let's look at this one. Well, this one, a little too, a little too involved. I would say for this one, you'd have to be given this formula. You don't memorize this formula. So you don't, and you, no, you don't memorize this stuff. So I would say, this could be on the exam, but it had to give you everything and you didn't plug in. So that's, but that's not likely to occur because that's more mathematical and numbers rather than physics. So I don't think I would pay much, too much attention to that one. Uh, this one similarly is, um, is a little bit too much, too much is all that stuff's given and all. Well, technically, you could be asked to do that. I would say here, I wouldn't worry about this one as much. Let's say when I'm studying, I would look at this one last. All right, so let's go on to homework C. For this one here, I think this one's a little too involved for, for an exam question. And even the one with the little, the little glass beads I think, because you'd have to then, it, to involve. So I would, I would not, I would not worry about those. Okay, so we go to D. All right, uh, perfect. Oh yeah, perfect. And these are good for the uh, GRE type questions where you basically have all the choice. So definitely, definitely study. You know this, the bug problem. Definitely study this. You know this is your virtual image thing where if you're moving down this way, see that this is going to be imaged up here someplace, you know, same distance behind the mirror, you know, as this 13, and then this is then the uh, image becomes like the intermediate object uh, for the for the next uh, surface. So definitely know that, know that cold. And concave mirror, yes, you want to know, you want to know how to do your sketches, you want to know how to do your formula, so definitely good, definitely good. Definitely good. Yes, definitely good and definitely good. So these are all, these are all good examples of uh, homework type uh, questions uh, that can be on the exam. So let's go to E. Uh, yes, definitely good. Yeah, this is your formula, setting up your magnifications. Yes, definitely know how to do these. And uh, this one here, uh, yes, this one's this one's good too. This this one shows you how you set up that intermediate image. You're basically using your formula, see, more than once, you know, here for the different optical uh, elements. So this is yes, this is an excellent uh, question that could be on the home or uh, on the exam. And then we go to F. Uh, yes, see, very very good. Now, when we get to these general derivations, I have to be careful uh, on this one and on this one. I have to be careful that I don't have a calculation that's going to take you too long. So what I can do is I can make more ideal cases. I could say F1 is F and F2 is F. 
stay in this distance is maybe 3F. And by doing that, the, the algebra simplifies greatly. So I would say, yes, these homework problems are excellent practice for the exam, but you're likely to not get such a general case, but a more specific case where the algebra won't be as long uh, on the exam. So yes, but this is good stuff. You definitely want to know this stuff here uh, for homework uh, F. And then homework G here. Uh, no, 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 no. This is, the, what, this is way too long. No, no, no. Uh, this would not, you would not be asked to do something like this on the exam. No. Uh, yes. Uh, two? Yes. Yeah. This is this this is where I was referring to earlier in the book. You had that little picture. You can do the simple geometry with the tangent. Yes. This is uh, this is uh, good stuff. So the second one here, uh, but not not the first one. But then we're finished. This is it. This is G. So that gives you a good idea of the exam. Now remember, there's going to be a multiple choice section, like a GRE, and we're looking at 10 of those. So it's going to be like three points each for those. It's 30 points. It's like one third of the exam and there are concepts. And when you're doing those, if you can't, if you don't know how to do it like in a minute, skip it, come back, because that's not like a long, that's not, they're not meant to be long problems. They're supposed to be done very quickly. So if you can't get it done in a minute or two, skip it, come back last. Uh, you want to make sure you get your uh, longer problems, you know, done that like like those homework problems, and I think there's going to be probably three of those, uh, like one maybe twenty points, twenty points, maybe thirty points, this kind of thing. So you'll you'll get three of those, and then you'll get the uh, the mold of choice. That's what we're we're looking at, and the exam, you know, the exam time. You know, if you go over to here, the exam starts at uh, three o'clock but you know we don't want you to be freaking out so one benefit we do have of the uh, online is that we can just relax the time constraint and, uh, and you can say from three to six o'clock yeah i don't think you're going to need a six o'clock but you know let's just say re let's make it relaxing so we'll give you the exam you download the exam a little before three o'clock and then you're going to work these uh, solution you know work out your solutions and then send them back to me uh, by around six o'clock. All right. Well, that's uh, a little review there. Good luck.